to foster healthy people and communities. Um, she was a co-founder of ICCR's um, Investors for Opioid Accountability. And through that, she identified how shareholders could address the, the opioid epidemic. And over the past four years, um, the Investors for Opioid Accountability, their engagement efforts contributed to increased governance and, and oversight of opioid um, related risks. And, and throughout her very illustrious career, Donna worked for several major healthcare systems where she was a, a tireless advocate for communities, especially those most marginalized and a leader in advancing public health and, and social justice. Um, and as one example of that work, she advocated for the predominantly Black community of, of Mossville, Louisiana. Oh, I just got a note. Welcome, Donna, that she's on. Um, hi, welcome. We were just jumping in. I was giving sort of a synopsis of some of the great work that you've done, both through Mercy Investment Services, as well as your um, career in, in healthcare. I was giving the example of how you advocated for the community in, in Mossville, Louisiana, where they were um, suffering negative health impacts because of the toxins that were released by a a local energy plant. Um, so maybe I'll just, I'll sort of finish up my, my brief remarks, um, sort of encapsulating Donna's wonderful career and her contributions. And then Donna, I'll pass the floor to you if you have any, any comments you'd like to make um, for the, the presentation of the award. Um, so just to sort of continue and wrap up, um, and during Donna's time at uh, Christus Health, that's when she partnered with Father Mike Crosby to engage companies on the sale and the advertising of tobacco products, uh, which considered one of her first engagement wins. Uh, and then Donna continued to work very closely with Father Mike, uh, including serving alongside him on ICCR's board from 2007 to 2013. And Donna also approached the issue of public and community health from a food perspective. She helped to lead much of ICCR's nutrition work with grocery retailers, food manufacturers, and restaurants on everything from improving uh, the nutritional content of children's menus to adopting responsible marketing policies for breast milk substitute products. And it was very much under Donna's tutelage that I personally, um, I learned about these issues. I saw how her quiet yet very firm determination contributed to a mindset shift at Kroger and their recognition that food is medicine and it can help to improve people's lives. And I learned the art of detailed note-taking. So thank you, Donna. Uh -huh. Um, and I have to say that in addition to these and many, many other accomplishments and contributions to shareholder advocacy and public health care, Donna has been and continues to be a respected and beloved colleague, mentor, and friend to so many of us. Donna, we are so grateful for your leadership, your guidance, your wonderful sense of humor that was so often shared with us over a glass of wine, a tasty meal. Um, mm -hmm. And the Father Mike Crosby Award, it, it recognizes those who have promoted a more just and sustainable world. And Donna, we, we certainly feel that you're a shining example of that. You know, they say that everything's bigger in Texas. And I think that that really speaks to your heart and your passion and dedication to both shareholder advocacy and, and public health. So um, it, on behalf of the, both the SGI board and your Mercy family, it gives me great pleasure to thank you for your tremendous contributions to this work and congratulate you on this very well-deserved recognition. So cheers and congratulations, Donna. Oh, Donna, you're on mute. <laughs> Still on mute. There we go. I'm not doing well today, am I? I lost the time. I thought it was 4.30, sorry about that. But anyway, no worries. <laughs> This is a really, really, really great honor. Um, I wish I could be with all of you. It's great to see your faces, but I wish I could hug you. It seems like such a long time since we've really been together in person. Um, and, and I can't tell you how special it is for me to get an award that's named after Father Mike Crosby, or as he was known to those of us who knew him well, just simply as Mike. He was Mike to all of us. And he certainly, certainly was a person who taught me about shareholder advocacy. I must say, I had had lots of healthcare experience, so I dealt a lot with tobacco illness and the side effects of tobacco and deaths. And, disability and so forth, <clears throat> but I didn't realize it because the company owned shares that we 
maybe had something to say about how they ran their companies. And Mike um, encouraged me to talk with what was then Eckert's, is now CVS, to um, convince them that advertising Marlboro's beside um, baby dolls and, and teddy bears wasn't exactly the best thing for our children. And um, uh, we were successful. So of course we celebrated. A, a cute little story about Mike <clears throat> is that I was so new at this. I was so, so new and Caroline, it's probably hard for you to even relate to the 1990s and early 2000s, but. <laughs> I was at least people. alive, thank you. <laughs> yes. The folks at Eckert's called me Sister Donna. They somehow, and I think a lot of companies did, I bet others on the phone will remember these days too. They just thought only the religious had any kind of, of morals, any kind of conscience. How could you? I mean, of course I had to be Sister Donna. When I signed my letter, I signed a PhD, but I guess they thought that was a new order or something, right? <laughs> so, but anyway, the thing that made me feel guilty, of course, is that I never confessed. I let them think whatever they wish to think about who I was. All I wanted was to get them to quit advertising, which they quit advertising. And so <clears throat> after several months, when I saw my the next time I decided, I just have to fess up, I was feeling really guilty. And so I said, <clears throat> you won't believe but the, the guys at Eckert's thought I was a sister, that I was religious. And I not only that, but I allowed them to think that. And dear Mike, I see some of you on the phone could relate to this said, Donna, this is religious work. So whatever it takes, it takes to get it done. And there was no need for penitence. He had a way of, um, of saying, hey, I do whatever it takes to get it done too. And so I never felt guilty after that. And it happened lots of times after that, I realized it was happening to others. Today, companies, I think, realize that there are those of us who haven't taken religious vows that, that do share the values of the religious. And so I don't think that that happens so often today. But anyway, mm -hmm. I know you all probably want to go on your merry way and don't want to listen to me. But one thing Mike said at that meeting in um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, for those of you who were there, remember how sick he was? He was on the telephone. He said, you know, this work has gone on for generations before us. And with all the bright young folks that are in the work now, all the great colleagues on this phone today, we know it will go on in the future. And that gave me lots of comfort when I retired last summer, just to know that there are so many of you who are so good, far better than I ever will be or was, and um, that will continue this work into the future. That's a warm, fuzzy feeling for me. So, and I get to continue to cheer for you. I have one little advantage that poor Mike didn't have. Um, but thank you, thank you, thank you. It's very special to be considered for this board even. And if you all, I don't know if you can see it on the phone, but it's beautiful and it's big. Wait, I got it. I think I, this way is right for you, right? I probably can't read it. It says Father Mike Crosby Award for the promotion of a more just and sustainable world presented to Donna Meyer by the seventh generation and so forth. Beautiful, lovely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Donna, I'm gonna jump to the front of the queue and our sister Donna, sorry. <laughs> in your new order uh, in just- It was a promotion, Frank. <laughs> from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and and I, when I'm referred to as brother Frank, I, I have to admit, I, I keep the title for a while before fessing <laughs> up. Um, 
you just been a great inspiration. You're one that Mike pointed out to me very early on to follow and to learn from. And you just, uh, when I joined the health team early on, and I remember meetings in Baltimore that Ed used to pull together and you just embraced any anyone new really to join in this. And as Caroline said, so congratulations. And I'm just so happy we, we recognized you. Thank you, Frank. Oh. And we, we have a couple minutes. So I would say anyone else that wants to say something, jump right in. I see I have a wonderful full chat box that I get to read. We can pull that transcript down and be able to send it to you as well if you don't get a chance to read it all here, so. Great, thank and you. Maybe I'll just follow while waiting for others to take their turn. Donna, for me, as well as somebody who works in the health team, you've been a, a guiding light. And, um, and as, as I said, as I said, when, when we gathered with the ICCR folk, you're the only person I know who can consistently pronounce all those new pharmaceuticals. <laughs> <laughs> That's called many, many, many years of experience. <laughs> and, and, and your, your, your uh, perseverance and, and heart of a lion are, are missed. And so, so glad to have had the time to be able to work with you. Donna, I haven't had the privilege to work with you. This is Cindy Golan from Riverwater Partners, but um, I am serving on the board. And when your name came up uh, for nomination for this award, everybody felt very strongly that you embodied everything that Father Mike Crosby and this organization seeks to do in the world. So thank you very much. I know you've inspired so many people here and um, thank you for your good work. And congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your work too. Great work. Hey, Donna, Brian, Penny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I hope uh... I can't even get fired today. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never. Uh, no, we we go a long way back. Uh, back when I was at the Mercy Health System, and and you were at Christus, and uh, I still remember when uh, uh, Susan had uh, said, you know, we're building out Mercy Investment Services. We need to do more work on the the healthcare mm -hmm. side. Um, you know, we had no clue what all you would get done. You know, from that standpoint, in terms of we had experience, we had worked together, was was very happy to bring you on. But when you really stop to think as to how much you accomplished, whether it be just pure number of engagements, whether it be everything with the IOPA, um, you know, all the different access indices, access to medicine, access to vaccines, access to nutrition, um, you know, the, the, the Sisters of Mercy's long history in healthcare just made all the sense for you uh, to come on. And we were truly, truly blessed to the work uh, that, that you did for us, but really the work that you did for everybody. I mean, you know, from our standpoint, we were the ones uh, uh, asking you to do it. But like with everything that you did, uh, very inclusive, uh, very involving uh, between the work with uh, uh, the cries, with uh, ICCR, with uh, you know, other non-religious groups. And uh, again, much deserved. Uh, we're, we're proud for uh, everything you've accomplished and, and we're so happy for you. Thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Donna, I'd like to know what on earth are you doing during retirement? Are you oh having God. a good time? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm, I'm so busy, I hate to admit this, I'm so busy that I actually talked with Susan Vickers, some of you will remember her. Yeah. I talked with her last week and I said, how do you get everything done? My list is so long every day, I never get it done. She said, Donna, you gotta start all over again. 
<laughs> she said she, she thinks you should have one thing on your list each day. And then when you get that done, you congratulate yourself and put your feet up and enjoy the rest of the day. So <laughs> maybe I'll try that. I am working on a project with Baylor University. It's on um, memory and Alzheimer's in older people. And I'm doing some of the epidemiology work, collecting data just for, it's kind of a fun thing because it's something that needs to be done. It was started in Germany and it's a worldwide study. There are people involved, universities involved in almost all the major countries in the world. So it's kind of exciting work. <laughs> but that's supposed to be, that's supposed to be a very small part of my job. I just, and I've read so many good books. <gasps> If any of you need a list of books. <laughs> yeah, send them on. <laughs> we won't have too much time to look at them because we're so busy too, but. Yes. Yeah. Great, good for you. Mm. Traveled a little bit, but not a lot because of COVID, frankly. It's hard to figure out how to live a normal life again. Sometimes I think, you know, my mother died the year before my Crosby died. Sometimes I think it would have been hard for her to, to accept the world as we live it today. And so I think we've all been through a challenge this last year and uh, I admire all of you for hanging in there because it's, it's hard to do work, <clears throat> to do all the work remotely because we used to get a lot of positive vibes, I think, from being in the same room together and propping each other up and cheering each other on. And, and even though we do this, which is really great and very important, um, we do miss the being together part. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sure there's some days like me, you don't want one word to them. Yes. <laughs> it was enough. <laughs> Donna, I will say that uh, I was I learned so much from being on the health work when I wasn't here at Mercy. And then when I got here, I realized how true it is that you are terrific at note taking and what you've done for <laughs> the sort of documentation efforts of Mercy Investment Services and how you've taught Caroline how to do the same. And I, you know, Poor Caroline. <laughs> Caroline is, uh, is better for it. We're all better for it. And frankly, the whole shareholder advocacy world is better for the way you documented and held to task the companies that you worked on. Um, and I, you know, I said it when we had our Mercy celebration, but um, one thing that I think I've taken away from your work is how to go deeper. The, so the proxy solicitation and the proxy memo work that you really brought to ICCR um, with the help of just a couple of our other members, mm -hmm. we weren't doing that work before you brought it over to the ICR, ICCR side. And um, that is a very important way to advocate for our shareholder engagements and our, for, for our shareholder resolutions. Mm -hmm. And we've taken that work and we've grown on it. And so um, that's just one one way in which you've strengthened how we do what we do. So for your documentation, for your wherewithal <laughs> in terms of filing things with the SEC and Edgar and that Byzantine empire of trying to get through um, mm -hmm. documents and for teaching us as, as Caroline and the rest of the generation that carries on, cheers to you. Thank you. You know, one when you bring up the um, the various kinds of documentation that we brought to Mercy, a lot of that was gained through the work of the IOA and the IOPA because they had a lot of huge members. You know, states like Illinois and New York City and big, big investors who had been doing this for a long time. So there was a lot to learn from them. But one thing that I learned from them that I sh would like to share with you all is there was only so much they could say to these companies because they, their commitment was to help the company make more money. And they really could not challenge some of the things that come, like the pricing, for example. You know how we've taken on pricing at ICCR and 
pricing may bring down the net profits. And one of the benefits of working for an organization like Mercy is you could say, now, do you really think that's ethical? Do you really think that's for the best of the world? You didn't have to say, first figure out whether it would help the company make more money to say it because you knew the sisters would be behind you in saying that. And, and these big groups often would call me in the evening even and say, you know, we've got that dialogue tomorrow and we need you on the dialogue <laughs> because we have this issue. And it was always something that the Sisters of Mercy obviously would have felt very strongly about and everyone on this call would feel strongly about but because of the financial implications, they felt like they couldn't be the person that said it. So I think you all should realize that you have got some, do you call it clout? What do you call it? Something behind you here supporting your work that gives you extra um, believability and, and ability to proceed. I'm not saying that very well, am I, Brian? You can say it better. Or Katie. <laughs> Well, it, it's everybody on this call. I mean, it's it's all the groups working together collectively uh, takes one small voice and makes it very loud. And so uh, uh, whether it be seventh generation, the other cries, ICCR, all the individuals, it's just incredible the amount of work that gets done uh, by, by everybody working together. Yep. Yeah, we have a higher power on our team. We have a higher power on our team. That's exactly right, Frank. That's the way to say it. And there are things that Sister Donna can say that not everybody else can get away with saying. <laughs> well, Donna, to wrap up, I will congratulate you again and, and just say thank you for just all the tremendous work that you've done, as, as you've heard from folks on this call, just the, the number of ways that you've really touched, not just the work, but all of our lives. And so congratulations again. I think this is very well deserved and we hope that you can find a, a wonderful place to display the award and to enjoy in your retirement and, uh, and hopefully a, a big glass of wine to celebrate with Charles later tonight. For sure, for <laughs> sure. Thank you all. <laughs> it's very nice. Thank you, Donna. Thanks, Donna. And thanks, Caroline, for doing that. Um, all right, does anybody have any closing comments or remarks? We've done our thank yous, um, but if anyone has anything else they'd like to add before we close today.